Welcome to our Chart of Accounts Best Practices video on how to convert your Chart of Accounts to meet GAAP rulings and JDE best practices. First of all, let me tell you a little something about me. I'm Beth Outram, and I've worked with J.D. Edwards for over 30 years, primarily in the finance er arena, general ledger accounts payable, accounts receivable, etc. I've implemented JDE from scratch, converted legacy systems into JDE, helped get data out of JDE to convert to some other software, assisted many clients both functionally and technically over the years, and I've done implementation. I've seen a lot of systems, some of them with really good, well-planned chart of accounts, and some with not very well-planned chart of accounts. Secondly, let me tell you a little something about SmartBridge. We're a full-service consulting firm based in Houston, Texas for JDE, as well as for many of the third-party systems created to augment JDE, such as Hubble, All Out, QSoft, Canon, ArcTools, etc. Additionally, we have three other departments. We have our advisory services department, which can provide PMO and project services, as well as advise you on how best practices in many different arenas can be met. I already mentioned our enterprise systems. We also have business intelligence and analytics. They support all other kinds of different platforms, as well as JDE but they focus primarily on MicroStrategy, Informatica, and Tableau. Then we have our Enterprise Mobility Department, which is, again, across all different platforms and focuses strictly on mobility and Internet of Things. So now let's get started. Why in the world would I want to change my chart of accounts? This is at best a detailed, tedious, and generally underappreciated job. At worst, it is a nightmare where accounts don't balance before and or after. You lose the connection with the history in your subledgers, such as accounts receivable, accounts payable, or inventory, for example. Well, none of us tackle this until it becomes way too painful, just like any other major change in our lives. Some of the symptoms of a chart of accounts that needs an overhaul are you can't run the financial statements directly from JDE, a balance sheet or a profit and loss statement, for example, or it takes several processes and or days to get either of those financial statements. You can't use the online analytical tools provided with E1, or world for that matter. Your AAI your distribution and manufacturing AAI, and your payroll AAI don't work correctly. You have changed or augmented your line of business. Your chart of accounts were set up for one line of business, and now you have an additional one or a different one. You cannot run consolidated financial statements accurately, or when you do, the numbers are totally unrealistic, or you have multi-currency problems. So, what do I do now? So let's step back a minute and consider. What do we want our chart of accounts to do for us? We want it to provide the structure for our general ledger accounts and subsequently our financial statements. We want it easy to learn and easy to navigate because people all throughout our company that use JDE are going to be using this chart of accounts not just our finance folks. We want it compliant with GAAP and any other regulatory bodies to which we have to report. And we want it consistent with JDE's expectations and best practices. Some of our major financial reports that we use all of the time are balance sheet, profit and loss, also known as your income statement, and the trial balance. Of necessity, we want to be able to complete create these with as little time and effort as possible. To that end, we will design our balance sheet first consisting of our assets, our liabilities, and our owner's equity, also known as capital. Then on our profit and loss statement, or income statement, we want first our revenues and then their expenses. The way that I remember this is to think about 
you want to show all your good stuff first. So you've got your assets at the top of your balance sheet and your revenue at the top of your income statement. I also want to mention that these headings should be at a level of detail of three, but we're going to get into levels of detail much more later. So now we have our major headings. Let's design the arrangement of our secondary level of headings, accounts like conventionally, current assets, live inventory, and this is not inclusive, this is just some categories. And then liabilities, we're going to have our open accounts payable, of course, and our owner's equity, also known as capital, will have our capital assets, accumulated depreciation, work in process, and, or construction in process. So now we have our major heading. Let's design the arrangement of our secondary level of headings. Conventionally, we're going to have current assets first in our assets and then our inventory. Again, remember the good stuff. Our capital and fixed assets, things that are not as liquid, go further down, like our inventory. We can change that into money if we have to, but we'd really prefer not to. We also have accumulated depreciation, work in process, and construction in process. Then we move on to our liabilities. And here we have, for one thing, our open AP trade account. Also have our deferred revenues and deferred costs if we're doing the deferred accounting that it, to meet the FASB and YSB rulings that just came out. Typically, all of your balance sheet will fit into a range using a four-character object account, like 4,000 to 4,999, with 4,999 being your net income account. You don't make in entries to your net income account. The system will make them when you close the year. And then you have your profit and loss statement beginning at 5,000 and going up to 99999. So, first we have our company. That's like our level one, if you will. And then we have our business units. Your company is like the envelope. In, inside your company, you're going to have your fiscal year, you're going to have your date pattern, you're going to have your um, currency code, etc. Then, if you want your departments to be a delineator in your chart, they need to be set up as business units. Business units or departments should never be used as a subsidiary or as a part of the object account. Object accounts. Object accounts are the type of entry. It's the description of the transaction that are in object accounts. Your numbering in your description is recommended to be consistent across all your companies and business units so that you can do consolidations and roll-ups. I always recommend four-digit account, object accounts. They're short, they're easy to remember, and when you get to setting up an automatic accounting instructions for profit recognition, for example, you'll need four maximum. Like accounts are all in the same group. Current assets are 1,000. Accounts receivable 1,400. Inventory beginning at 1,700. Capital assets and work in process in the 3,000s, etc. Your first two digits indicating and refining the group, and the last two digits having significance in delineating the group. For further information on this kind of numbering system, see the YouTube video that I made on June 23, 2015 entitled J.D. Edwards Financial Best Practices Series, A Well-Designed Chart of Accounts, and the follow-up created the next week, entitled J.D. Edwards Financial Best Practices Series, Changing Your Chart of Account. Then we have your subsidiaries, and as you can see in the screen, in most cases they are delineated by a period. You can define this symbol, but usually it's a period. So subsidiaries give you 
an expanded description of the object account and further delineation of those transactions. Use the subsidiary when you need a detailed accounting activity for an object account. It's also used to delineate phases if you're using job costing. I've already told you object accounts and subsidiaries should be consistent across all business units and all companies. They don't all have to have subsidiaries, and they don't all have to be used in all of your business units. But if you don't use some accounts in some business units, don't renumber. Use the same numbering scheme across all of your business units. Logical relationships and numbering between the balance sheet and the income statement, which means that if I have um, an account in my working process, for example, for regular labor, and my last two digits are zero, 01, in my income statement for regular labor, my last two digits should be zero, 01. Again, I refer you to the YouTube videos that you can look at and see those numbering systems. Subledgers. Subledgers are not included in the level of details or even in the chart of accounts if you look at the chart of accounts. What subledgers give you is additional information that comes from your subledger systems. If you think about the old days when you did this all in paper in books, you had a general ledger book and you had a subledger book for your accounts receivable and a subledger book for your accounts payable. You want to bring information from those two other books into the general ledger, but you don't want to lengthen your chart of accounts to do it, but you do want to hold on to that information. That's what you should be using for your, your subledger for. Okay, let's talk about levels of detail. I said we would get into this more, and I mentioned that the, your headings of assets and liabilities should be at a level three. And I also mentioned that your company was a level one. So here you can see the pyramid of the levels of detail that JDE uses to allow you to design your own chart of accounts and still be able to roll, roll up accounting transactions into a more logical sequence in your chart. Le level of detail starts from, from the lowest number being your highest level of detail, and your highest number, nine, being your lowest level of detail. Although it's never really talked about like this, the company is actually your largest division for all your levels. So the next logical division is your business unit. And they all reside in the same table. Business unit, job, project, all of them use exactly the same table. And so you can use jobs in your working process. You can use projects in your working process. You can use business units all throughout your chart, and you can use all three of those in your income statement as well. So your major headings at level three are assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses. Then your level four are things like current assets, fixed assets, current liabilities, and so on. Cash would be a level five. That's going to be where your bank accounts would be, your trade accounts receivable, your open accounts payable, etc., would more than likely end up in a level five. If you want, if you have multiple bank accounts and you want to keep each of them separate in your general ledger, you might further the, divide them into a level of six, and then they would roll up to a level five. That's how this works, is that my level nine rolls up into my level eight, my eight, level seven, eight into level seven, et cetera, on up the board. Now, every single count definition has both a level of detail and a posting edit code. Levels of detail and posting edit codes work hand in hand because our header accounts 
levels 3, 4, and 5 are also our totaling accounts. So those would have an end because we don't want transactions going into our totaling accounts directly. Intercompany accounts, accounts payable trade, accounts receivable trade accounts, all have a posting edit code of an M, which means that they are only allow, only transactions being posted from the system can be posted to these accounts. You cannot post transactions directly to those accounts. You can see the other types of posting edit codes here on the screen. I'm not going to go through each of them. Blank is the default. It allows all posting. If we're converting, we might want to think about models. A couple of different reasons for thinking about models. We want to be able to design our and plan our chart of accounts prior to actually using it or trying to use it. And so we can design our chart of accounts with our models first, and then we can go into them and see if they work. And if they don't, we can change the model. They are also very convenient for keeping things consistent across your companies if there are models for people to use. Once you have your models set up and you like them, then they can be copied into any business unit or job or project by copying either the chart to the job or the job to the job or the job to the business unit type. So you might think about that as well. Okay, so you've looked at the YouTube video and it shows you a really great looking chart of accounts, but how do I get from where I need, am now to what it needs to be? We've created our chart of accounts. We've gotten buy-in from our business that this will work for them. We've gotten an agreement from upper management as to why this is needed and how it will help the business. Are we ready to begin? No. We need to consider. Are we combining multiple accounts into a single account? Are we combining multiple business units into a single business unit? Are we splitting business units? What about our history that contains our old account numbers? And last but not least, our AIs, DMAIs, payroll AIs, and RPO AIs. What can we use to help us? Well, I've already given you a hint. It's an account ID. An account ID is an eight character field stored in your chart of accounts master, and it is unique to the business unit object subsidiary combination. It is very often stored in transactions in the subledgers sub and used by the system to retrieve the readable account number. Notable exceptions, they are not in purchase order details. They are not in the AEI tables, and they are not in the item ledger. But I still recommend highly that if at all possible, you try to retain the account ID for the accounts that are changing business unit object subsidiary. And how can we do that? Well, if it's just a small job, we can use our global updates menu, G09316. We can change the business unit, both the number and the company in which it exists. But the business unit is different than if we change our object and subsidiary. It is the one thing that you must set up ahead of time in order to change from one business unit to another business unit. Not copy, change. Objects and subsidiary accounts cannot exist before you create a new one from an existing one. If I change an object account or if I change a subsidiary, First, I change it in my Chart of Accounts Master, F0901, then in my Balance Tables, F0902, using Global Updates, and then in my Detail Table, F0911. But please be sure that you back up F0901, F0902, and F0911 before you begin. But as you can see on our menu G09316, 
You can have the ability to update your account description, the levels of detail, posting edit codes, category codes, etc. You can even change the budget pattern codes, and you can change the modeling and consolidation codes. After you have run these global updates, you will want to run the integrity reports, accounts without business units, account balance without account master, transactions without account master. It is important to verify that your AAI's automatic accounting instructions reflect any changes made to a business unit object or subsidiary. Review your business unit inf information. If you've created a new business unit, you can revise the old business unit information. Update your reporting versions, your allocations, your model journal entries if necessary to reflect the changes you made in your chart of accounts. But what if this is a big job? You're going to want to start in a separate alternate environment. You're going to want to write custom conversion programs. You're going to want to run those and test those in your alternate environment. You're going to want to change your AIs, DMAIs, payroll AIs, RPO AIs, all of your financial statements, historical information, as of reports, etc. Again, I can't emphasize enough, start in an alternate environment and work with it. Run transactions through, run a parallel for a couple of days if you possibly can to make sure that your chart of accounts stands up to the new demands being put on it. So speaking of AAIs, let's talk about AAIs. In our AAIs, because there is the great flexibility of being able to design your own chart of accounts, there, are, there is a facility within the AAIs that allows you to define to the system what accounts, what is the account range for your assets, your account range for your liabilities, equities, the account number for your retained earnings, etc. You can see them here. This tells the system that when it produces balance sheets, when it produces income statements, these are where it's going to find the information it needs. This saves you from designating in the chart of accounts itself whether or not any particular account is an asset account or a liability account, etc. For multi-currency, you have the GVs, GIWs, GRs, PB, PBCs, etc. These can be set up with the suffixes, those small letters X are suffixes for the currency code. We have a whole set of AAIs for accounts payable. We have our default open trade account, our default bank account, discounts taken or lost, etc. We also have accounts payable multi currency AAIs, gains and losses, unrealized gains and losses, and a clearing account. For accounts receivable, for invoicing, we have a set of a subset of AAIs. For receipts, customer payments, in other words, we have a subset of AAIs. And for miscellaneous things such as credit and collection functioning or netting between accounts receivable and accounts payable, we have a section for them as well. And, of course, multi currency AAIs for accounts receivable. Okay, so we've got our chart of accounts. We put it into production. Everything is going great. Everybody in the company is happy. And then we realize that we need to have some kind of facility to complete our reporting to regulatory bodies or perhaps we're multinational and we have different countries that require a set format for the chart of accounts. 
so we need an alternate chart of accounts. Well, JDE has thought of that. It allows the design of these, <clears throat> the design of this allows a completely different chart of accounts to meet, as I said, regular, regulatory requirements. I have seen it used to meet the format for a public agency for the state of California, for example, or the company is a U.S. company, but we also have a French company, and we don't want to have an entirely different chart of accounts for everyday use because then we can't do consolidations and restatements, but we do want to be able to report to France in the proper form. Alternate chart of accounts allows you to do that. You can include, exclude, and consolidate different accounts you can do differences in totaling than what you have in your current chart of accounts. It uses category codes 21 through 23. Each of these are 10 characters apiece, and the descriptions are specific to that category code grouping that you have set up. Standard reports. There are standard reports such as your balance sheet and your income statement specifically based on the category codes 21 through 23. There are also standard inquiries that can be used for these three category codes. So this is Beth Outram with SmartBridge, hoping that you will consider at least converting your chart of, account, chart of accounts if it's needed. Perhaps you didn't know that the global updates were there for you to even change a single account. I know that I've covered a lot of information in this video. It is available for you to replay as much as you need to understand the concepts and the practice, any changes that you might need. Also, the two YouTube videos that I mentioned will help you a great deal in the design of your chart of accounts. So, this is the latest in our best practice series. This is converting your chart of accounts. And I'm Beth Outram.